Liberty Ridge, this is Mrs. Winger, and today I have for you Inky's Amazing Escape. This is one of the Washington's Children's Choice Picture Book Award nominees for 2020. Um, maybe we can get through all of them and then we can do a vote like we did last year. Inky's Amazing Escape is written by Cy Montgomery and it's illustrated by Amy Schimler Safford. The baby octopus hatched out of an egg the size of a grain of rice. Here's our egg right here. His mother used her jet to blow him from her den out to the sea, along with his tiny octopus brothers and sisters. Each octopus set out on a journey alone. They're born ready to explore. For weeks, the octopus rode the currents of the Pacific Ocean. He ate tiny scraps of food that floated by. He grew fast. Soon, he needed bigger meals, clams, fish, and octopus's favorite, crabs. To find them, the little octopus had to explore. Curious, he wondered, might there be a tasty morsel here? What about over there? He poked his slippery, bendy arms into every nook and cranny. Soon he found a yummy clam. He used his strong suckers to pull the clam apart and ate the clam for dinner. Now the octopus was sleepy. He would, how would he find a safe place to nap? He scratched along the coral. He found a crack that led to a little cave. In went one arm, two arms, four arms, eight. Good night. In the morning, the octopus again went exploring. What would he find today? He could both feel and taste with his suckers but he didn't see the long green fish swimming like a banner rippling in the wind. It was a moray eel. He chomped down on two of the octopus's arms. The young octopus used his jets to shoot away head first and arms trailing behind. But the eel had bitten off the tips of two arms. So here's his missing arms. The octopus was hungry and hurt, but he went on. The octopus spotted a wooden box lying on the seafloor. In went his slippery, bendy arms. In went his squishy head. He ate the lobster. Then he took a nap. Woken from sleep, the octopus felt himself rising up and out of the water. What the octopus thought was a safe den was a fisherman's lobster trap. You aren't a lobster, the fisherman exclaimed. Who do we have here? The octopus, who had never seen a human before, wondered the same thing. You're hurt, the lobster man observed. He decided to take the little octopus to the aquarium, aquarium all the way over there. The aquarium keeper saw the octopus's hurt arms. You'll be safe with us, she told the octopus and poured him into a tank. She named him Inky because when they're scared, octopuses can squirt ink. The little octopus wasn't scared. He was ready to explore. He felt and tasted the glass and all the corners with his slippery, bendy arms and his strong suckers. He crawled to the top of the tank and looked up at the keeper. She handed him his favorite snack, a yummy crab. Now they were friends. Inky liked it when the keeper petted him. Sometimes he was so happy he would change color. 
Octopuses change color to fool prey and escape enemies, but they show their feelings this way too. When the keeper opened the lid to his tank, Inky turned red with excitement. When he relaxed, he turned white. Sometimes he made spots on his arms, and sometimes he sprouted stripes and splotches. Inky felt better. He had fun in his tank. The keeper gave him dried corals, pots and jars to explore. Inky poked his slippery, bendy arms into all of them. Sometimes he squeezed his squishy head inside. Sometimes the keeper gave Inky toys. Inky liked to take apart Lego blocks and put them back together. He liked playing with Mr. Potato Head. One time with his suckers, he pulled off Mr. Potato Head's eyes and handed them to the starfish in his tank. Inky grew very fast. When he arrived at the aquarium, he was the size of a baseball. Now he was the size of a soccer ball. His arms had healed. Inky was always exploring. One night, the keeper forgot to close the lid to Inky's tank tightly enough. He poked a slippery, bendy arm through the gap. What would he find? First one of his arms, then another, and another. Then all eight arms climbed out of the tank. Finally, his squishy head was out too. Inky slid along the floor, exploring with his arms. Soon he came to a hole. A drain for the water always slopping out of the aquarium tanks and hoses. Where would the hole lead? There was only one way to find out. He poked his slippery, bendy arms into the drain. One arm, two arms, four arms, eight. He pulled and pushed, he pushed and pulled, and finally his squishy head popped inside the drain too. Inky traveled a long way. Down, down, and down, Inky inched his way through the long pipe. At last, he could feel and taste a change. Out popped one arm, two arms, four arms, eight, and finally, Inky's squishy head was free again. The drainage pipe ran right back into the Pacific Ocean. And that's where Inky is today, still ready to explore. So boys and girls, this book is a nonfiction book. That means it's a true story. So the author actually gave us all kinds of notes, told us all about octopuses, and fun facts about octopuses and the story of Inky. Inky lived in a, a country called New Zealand, which is on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. And Inky is a New Zealand common octopus. In the links below, you'll find some um, links to the actual news stories about Inky's escape. Take a look, you might enjoy them. Bye, boys and girls.